the gold standard of NFT projects these days is to issue 10,000 NFT collectibles. But then what? In the case of Eagle Labs' Board Ape Yacht Club, they issued their own native token called ApeCoin. And since then, uh, they use that as a way to scale and grow their community. And one of the folks that helps to do that is my next guest, Tara Fung. And Tara Fung, thanks so much for joining us. You're the founder of CoCreate. So maybe you could begin by telling us a little bit about how you help folks, NFT projects, build their own native tokens. Yeah, and thank you so much for having me. I think when we look at NFT projects, what we notice is that they really have the makings of becoming these mass market consumer brands across media, entertainment, IP, fashion, but they're not going to be able to get there with 10,000 NFTs because NFTs have created digital scarcity of unique assets and scarcity and exclusivity is the opposite of scalability. And so we're really focused on helping successful NFT projects and other Web3 brands be able to reward, grow, and engage their community by having their own native token that provides a strong incentive mechanism for them to be able to achieve certain outcomes, but also gives voice and ownership back to their community. What are some examples of like the kinds of coins that they might issue and what uses they might have. Yeah, so I think just looking within the NFT landscape, we know that Yuga Labs has ApeCoin, um, and that grew them from a few thousand NFT collectors to now it's roughly around 100,000 that have ApeCoin, and it has the potential to scale to millions of individuals, right? Because it is a fungible token that's meant to be interchangeable, that's meant to be divisible. Um, but with the other projects that we see, Utes or D-Gods, they have dust, or Cool Cats has milk, and those are only examples of tradable or freely exchangeable tokens. But there are a lot of NFT projects that have their own tokens that are not freely tradable, but they serve as a reward mechanism within a closed ecosystem. Um, so Space Riders and Star is another example there, where if you have one of their NFTs, you can receive their Star token, and you can use that to get certain goods or benefits, right? You can um, enter into raffles for special products and services. You can actually be included on allow lists. I think what's exciting about fungible tokens in terms of a brand's perspective is it really does allow them to create their own token economy with special rewards that allow them to achieve certain aims as well as create utility and value for a broader group. You know, in the future, we're not going to say this is a successful project because they have 10,000 NFTs. 10,000 is the starting point, but if we want these brands to be able to grow into these mass market powerful enterprises, which many of them do aspire to that, right? And if we look at Doodles and Azuki, these are mass market brand potential across fashion and media. And so we want to help them do that. And we support them in the design, the launch, and the management of their own token economy. Okay. So, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier in the show, but the SEC has started to probe Yuga Labs for, you know, their uh, NFTs and whether or not, uh, you know, they could be securities. And so I wonder, you know, where does that factor into the concern as you build out these projects? It's a really great question. And I think that regulatory uncertainty is a problem for founders, for builders, because you don't want to do something that goes against the rules. The problem is that the rules aren't clear because it's based on 1930s legislation and 1940s um, actual precedent. And it's hard to apply something that's almost 100 years old to today's most modern technology. Well, like I say, the guidance is there that you can apply the Howey test or you know whether or not these are investment projects uh, contracts rather and whether or not people are entering them expecting uh, some profit. Yeah, I think the there's a few issues associated with the Howey test, uh, an investment of funds with an expectation of profit into a common enterprise. Like that can be applied to most things, right? But yet everything could be that for we, paintings, art, it could be for painting, for art, for collectibles, for my home. My home is not a security, right? And there's not a common enterprise with that. But you can see how this are very broad categories. But our approach isn't to say, hey, you know, we're going to push you in a direction that makes you test the rules and hopefully you don't get caught. We actually are introducing something that allows projects to launch a token that is not able to be bought and sold on an exchange. And so they can actually make mechanisms where they're able to give out their token so people can earn it. Maybe when they purchase a product with them or they fill out a user profile or they refer a friend. Things that we classically deem as loyalty. So they can still provide this token to create those customer 
customer acquisition and retention goals, but then that token can also be used to get access to certain utilities, goods, services, benefits, exclusive merch within NFT projects and just across the world, like how many people line up for Supreme around the street here in New York? What if by having a certain number of a brand's fungible tokens, you were able to get on that list to get the newest oh, merch that, drop? That was a subject of a New York Times article recently, you know, whether or not there would have paywalled restaurants uh, using NFTs. Do you think that is the thing of the future? I think that tokens, whether NFTs or fungible tokens, create an incredible opportunity for you to reward your most loyal members and to create tiers of membership. And so we're going to see that continue where you we've had private clubs for a long time. And it's because people like being able to be part of something, but companies also need a way to be able to scale and to distinguish between their most loyal customers, but also open up the doors to a broader universe. And we think that that's why the combination of NFTs as well as fungible tokens within a given brand's ecosystem can be incredibly powerful. Laura, did you want to jump in there? Well, no, you know, I was going to ask you how you distribute them, but I think earning probably is the best way to sort of skirt the regulatory issues because as we've seen things like airdrops or, I mean, there's so many things that it looks like the SEC is potentially targeting as securities offerings. So, yeah, I think the earning mechanism where you say, hey, you can only get our token by doing certain things. You can't buy and sell it. There can be no investment of funds with the expectation of profit, right? If there's not able to be a fair, uh, free market for that token. I don't think that's the ending point. I think, and I would say um, that's a way for projects to be able to start moving towards a more open system. And my hope and expectation is that the legislation and the regulation will evolve so that there are clear rules because tokens have existed for a long time. Like casinos have tokens. We've had mechanisms for trade, for loyalty, for rewards. Doesn't mean it's an investment contract. It's just it's such a sticky issue right now that projects don't know how to launch a token that doesn't have that risk. So we want to help them launch one, get that reward and loyalty mechanism in place. And if and when the regulations and the legislation become more clear, they can choose to take away those transfer restrictions and have a freely tradable token. All right. You know, I just want to move on to another topic. Uh, I saw this tweet that you had last week that, uh, you know, token governance rights are often touted as a utility for holders, yet governance engagement is low across the board. So with the Uki Dow fiasco happening right now, you know, engagement may even go lower. What's your take on lawyers in the CFTC's case saying that DAOs aren't people? I think that whenever you're trying to have your DAO be representative of an entity, you should have a legal entity that is supporting it. A DAO is not a legal entity, and so you need to have one for it if you want to have limited liability of those who are participating. And so in the case of Uki DAO, they were clearly trying to skirt, right? They were not trying to be good actors, in my opinion. They were trying to say, ooh, we think we understand the rules and how to get around them. And so most DAOs, and I believe Yuga Labs actually, and Ape Coin DAO is a great example of this. They created a legal entity. That legal entity owns that token contract and is responsible for that token. And that token is used in an ecosystem that is larger than just Yuga. And that's an example where someone is trying to follow the rules and they're making sure that they're creating those legal protections for people. Because you don't want to think that, oh, if I have a token, now am I responsible for anything that happens? Similar to how if I own currency of a given country, it doesn't mean that I'm responsible for their laws and their their enforcement. All right. Laura, any, anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah. I So I just want to understand your business a little better. So basically yeah. you provide sort of like, it sounds like maybe developer marketing and then some compliance, kind of like all of that wrapped up in a one for these companies? That we are building, we're a backend protocol that enables anyone to come in and to design their token to say, I want to have an ERC-20 token. I want this to be a fixed supply or an uncapped supply. I want to make these allocations and distribute it to individuals potentially or only in, allow it to be earned in certain ways. And I want to go on and add certain utility to my token. It can be used to purchase merch or participate in raffles or get spots on an allow list. And so we're providing the technology and infrastructure so that any project or brand can come in, pull that off the shelf versus building things from scratch um, in order to scale their businesses. 